Hey everyone, welcome back to the Cozy Girl Fancy Nails podcast, the coziest but fanciest podcast on the internet. I'm your host, Michaela, and I'm excited for today's topic because it's all about making money without having to actually do nails as a nail artist. Yes, it's possible. And yes, I believe that you can do it and you're going to do it. So (laughs) let's get into this before I get into it, actually. I want to put out a disclaimer that this is not three ways to get rich quick. It's not like three ways to like three easy ways. It's going to take time and it's going to take some mental capacity, but you can do it. Okay. I believe in you. (laughs) Let's get started. Okay. So I'm going to put some announcements in here and just get them out the way real quick because I've said them the last three podcast episodes. And if you've listened to the last three podcast, last two podcast episodes, if you listened to the last two, you've already heard these and hopefully you're already a part of them. If not, this is your sign. Three times a charm, right? The mailing list, join it. It's just a place to be. It's just information. You're going to get discounts for future products and services, all the things you want to be there. The Cozy Club broadcast channel, that is on my Instagram and that's where I post polls. I post some reels. I give you guys some like inside information. Like if you miss it on an email, you miss it on my story, you miss it on a podcast, it's going there. So make sure that you are part of that. And lastly, my Cozy Club Facebook page. It's a community of just nail artists that love all things nails. Right now it's still in the beginning stages, so there's not a whole lot on there. It's just a bunch of people coming together and that's okay. We can always start when people come together. We can always make something happen. Okay, so I want you guys to join those things and be a part of the Cozy Club and yeah, we're gonna have fun. So now that all that's out the way, I'm going to talk to you guys about how you can make some money, okay? And like I said, these aren't three easy ways or three get rich quick ways. These are just some practical ways that you can start making money. I've found the beauty in having multiple streams of income from different things because you never know when one thing is going to start to slow down. I noticed that in December, things start racking up really fast because everybody wants their nails done for Christmas. But then when January 1 comes, you're like, where are my clients? They need a fill. They need this. They need that. What happened? And they're gone. So you want to make sure you have some extra streams and I'm going to show you some. So the first one is digital project. Oh my gosh. I cannot speak today. Digital products. This is something that is free of charge and I think can be the fastest thing to do. However, you still want to be thorough with it and you still want to make sure you're taking your time and really finding value in these things. So things like a content planner, a digital journal, um, printables, all these things uh, are things that you can sell as digital products. They can be $5, they can be $10, they can be $15, depending on how long they are, how thorough you go, whatever it is, you can charge however you, however much you want. I would do research on what other people are selling their printables for just, or just digital content in general for, just so that way you're not overselling or overcharging or undercharging. That's just me. Um, last year I did a Notion template and a Canva template. The Canva template was actually a printable or I used it on my iPad, but it was basically like a weekly checklist, a a daily checklist, and then you could also track your inventory. And then on my Notion one, I had the same thing on there, except I did, uh, or I had extra. So I had like sales and like how much was coming in and how much I was like buying for my business. And then I also had like a place to like track your customers or whatever. Um, as a press on artist, there was things that I needed a lot of (laughs) that I feel like a lot of people didn't put on the regular, like, um, like nail tech pages. Um, there's a little bit of difference with, uh, with press on nail artists and nail techs. So I created something for press on artists and, I made about $150 off that first month. 
I took them down after that first month. I was just like, I'm done. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I could have made more. That could have been if I would have just kept pushing it. And every time, you know, somebody said, oh, where'd you get that? And I sent it to them every time I could have made $150 every month, um, really pushing it. So it just all depends on how much you want to push your content and, uh, push your products. Um, and yeah, so having a niche in that would be the best way to start that. So like for me, it was press on artist. I didn't see anyone make a press on artist checklist. I never saw anybody make something for sales coming in for press ons and what I was buying and all the things. So I made that for press on artists. This isn't something that I think I would necessarily sell to clients. However, you probably could make things for clients such as like a how to properly take care of your nails at home or how to give yourself a spa treatment at home. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily try to sell your your digital content to your clients. I don't think that it would work as well as doing it for other nail artists. So if you are somebody that doesn't really have a nail artist following, but more of a client-based following, I would definitely not do the digital content. That's just me. The next thing is physical, <laughs> physical products. I literally keep stumbling over these words. So for physical products, I have a couple. I have press-ons, I have cuticle oils, uh, soaps, hand creams, merch, and a polish line. Press-ons is technically doing nails, but because it's a product and you can do it at home, I figured why not just add it. Uh, cuticle oils, soaps, and hand creams. Definitely check your like state's regulations because I know not every state allows people to make things like soaps just because I know that there is some sort of chemical in there. So I would just check that. Um, but like the hand creams and cuticle oils are super easy. I was making cuticle oil, I guess two years ago at this point, which is so wild. Um, that one, it was used with almond oil because I feel like almond oil has the least amount of like smell. And then I would add essential oils to it. Make sure that the essential oils are used for skin and not the ones you put in the diffuser because there is a difference. Um, so yeah, that's what I did with the cuticle oils. And, um, I have a book that like has like how to make your own skincare. So I can make a bunch of hand creams as well. I don't sell them, <laughs> but I could, uh, merch. You could make aprons or, hoodies for nail artists that, you know, say, says something about doing nails. Like, I don't know. What's something that I saw recently? I don't do drama. I do nails or doing nails. I think, yeah, there's a press on artist that has merch and it says, um, doing nails is my cardio. I thought that was really cute. Um, so yeah, you can do merch if you're doing it for your clients for nail techs, you can have hats that say like my nail tech is the best or ask me where I get my nails done or um, you didn't look at my hands or my hands are right here. Something like that. I think those that would be really cool too. And then like have your logo somewhere on there. Um, then your clients are repping your business outside of just your <laughs> like your studio you know um and then a polish line I feel like this is the most difficult one to do but I think that you can get the most out of it I feel like I'm somebody who likes to try polishes no matter what I don't care what brand I don't care what color for the most part <laughs> I just like to try different polishes so I feel like this would be a really good one, especially if you have a large following of nail artists. But even if you don't, even if you have just like, just clients or whatever, um, and 
they want to do nails at home, like, I feel like you could make something for them. Um, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. But there's two different types of, like, ways you can do this. So you can do a a white label or private label. White label is going to have basically everything done for you. You can pick your polished colors. You can pick your uh, bottle and then they just slap your logo on top of it. Or you can do private label, which is you actually creating the formula and you actually like going in and hand picking everything about the product. I see the benefit to both. I don't see an issue with white label as controversial as that might be. I know a lot of people have problems with white label, but some of your biggest brands that you use like Beatles, Model 1s, and I'm almost positive, almost positive that McCart is one of them. They might not be anymore, but I know they were at some point. Um, Because I was on the site making these polishes <laughs> and I saw the McCart uh, lamp or I saw the lamp. I didn't see it. It didn't say McCart. It just was white and looked exactly like the one that I have. And I saw their polish bottles. I don't know if their polish bottles still look like this. I actually don't have any of their polishes. So I don't know. But their polish bottles were like white and had this like little pink label thing on it with like dots and stuff. Yeah, that (laughs) was on there. So I don't know if I'm wrong. Somebody tell me, but I don't think, I don't think that there's anything wrong with white label, especially if you're making money. I spent, I think $2 a bottle on that and I made a $200 profit. Um, well I made a $100 profit because I only sold half of them. (laughs) But again, this is another reason why having a bigger following for polishes is probably better. And then also choosing colors that people actually wear. I chose hot pink because I wanted it to fit my brand, but I don't even wear hot pink nails. So it's kind of hard to sell those. So I've been giving them away. I've been, um, saying, Hey, if you buy one, you get one free or whatever. Um, but yeah, doing maybe like a base coat and top coat or, uh, I don't know, something other, like maybe a white or a black, something that people are actually going to buy, um, and use and need more of. So I wouldn't just choose a random color at first (laughs) when you're first starting. Um, yeah. And like I said, private label is when you work with a manufacturer to come up with your own formula. Um, let's see, where am I on this thing? Oh, test both thoroughly. Even though it's white label, you want to make sure that you agree with what's in the bottle. You don't want to just put some random thing in a bottle and slap your logo on it and then sell it because then if somebody has an issue with it and they come back to you and they're like this made me break out because you said that it was hema free or you said that it was this or whatever that's going to be on you you have to read the label make sure that everything on the label is something that you agree with that's in there and then you also want to make sure that you are um, my mind just went totally blank. <laughs> you want to make sure that you're testing the products on yourself and on art on artificial nails. So like put it on your natural nail and wear it for as long as you can see how long it lasts, put it on artificial nail, wear it, wear it for as long as you think, or as long as it lasts. So whether that's press-ons, whether that's um, gel X or acrylic or just your basic nail, you want to test the life of all of that to see how long it lasts. If it chips super quickly, whatever it is, make sure that you're testing thoroughly. Okay, thoroughly. Um, you can also do things like brushes, nail lamps, and lacquer polishes. Those are all up to you how much you want to spend and how much you think you'll get in return. Again, I really feel like if you're going to be doing brushes and a polish line or um, like 
nail lamps or whatever, you want to make sure <laughs> that you have a following that's actually going to buy those things from you because there's so many other places to buy these things and so many competing brands that if you don't have the following to do it, I wouldn't. And I learned that the hard way. I tried to start a polish brand before I got to a thousand followers and all of my followers were like up and coming press on artists. So, uh, we were spending money on other things other than another up and coming press on artist products, but I think I'm in a good spot now. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Um, okay. The last thing is I think will get you the most money. It is the most time consuming. However, it doesn't require any money forward. So you can literally start with your phone in some natural sunlight window. Okay. So this is becoming a UGC content creator. I recently just learned about this. I think I saw it sometime last year and kind of like looked into it, but I didn't continue to look into it. I don't know why, but once I looked into it again, I was like, I think this is something that I can do. And I'm literally set up to where I can start this. So I can't give you any like testimonials about to to <laughs> Lord Jesus, please help me speak today. <laughs> I can't give you any testimonials for myself about how it goes. But when I do have some, I will definitely make sure to let you know. So the first thing that I want to tell you is that UGC means user generated content. So if you've seen like on TikTok where like it's some random person just talking about this product and then when like the at, the thing is done, it says shop now, that's most likely a UGC creator. That means that they pitched themselves to the brand and made a deal with that brand to get paid. So I've seen people talk about getting paid from anywhere from $30 to like $600 a transaction. So what that means is I pitch myself to a brand and they can choose to use me that one time and they could choose to use me that one time for $600. Or they could say, hey, we want to actually have you for a year and we're going to use this package that's $550. So now you're making $550 a month. It just really depends on the brand and if they like you or if they even use UGC or whatever, you want to make sure that um, you're just pitching yourself correctly. And I'm going to post um, a link down below that is talking about UGC and like how to get started. This is actually the video that I followed to get myself going. Um, so by the time that this comes out, I probably would have already started pitching to brands. So that'll be really awesome. Um, and I'll let you guys know how it goes, but I think this is a good way for, con for, uh, nail artists to not only make money, but also get your name out there with brands. So you don't necessarily need a following. I could literally use my personal account, which I used to use my personal account as like, I was trying to become an influencer over there. And then I decided like, I wanted a spot where it was just my friends and family. So I made all the people that were following me for the like influencer side, unfollow me. So now I have like no followers, but I could literally use that account and be like, well, you, you don't even use an account. You're, you're going out to brands yourself and saying, I want to help create content for your brand. And this is why you should use me. The difference between UGC creator and an influencer with a brand deal is that the influencer posts the brand deal on their platform where the UGC creator posts doesn't post. They don't post the content. They send it off to the brand and the brand uses it. However, you guys decided to make the content work in your contract. <laughs> so that it, you're literally just being almost hired. I said, I told my husband, you're being hired almost like people are in like commercials. 
but you want to make sure that you like the brand. You don't want to just do every, any and every brand just to say that you do it. Um, and just to make money, you want to make sure that you have that. And, um, in the video that I posted or I'm posting in the link, she did talk about having a niche. And so if nails is your niche, start reaching out to nail brands. I know I've seen multiple, multiple, multiple nail brands use, um, UGC. So this is something that you have to research and it definitely takes a while to set up, but I definitely believe that it might be the best option to make more money outside of just doing nails because you can always be pitching yourself. So that's that. Um, I think that's it for this video, which is good because I cannot speak anymore. <laughs> I literally recorded the whole first one and realized that the mic wasn't on. So I had to redo this. And so I'm a little tired, but it's all right. It's all good. We got it out. I hope you guys make some money off of these things that I told you about. If you have any questions, of course, let me know in the comments below, message me on Instagram, email me. I don't even know if I put my email on the bottom, but it's nxmichaela at gmail.com. You can always email me there. Um, for any inquiries, questions, um, but yeah, I think that's it. And I did my announcements at the beginning. So yeah, we're almost out of January y'all, which is already weird to me. It's so weird. I have like one more video, I think, or one more podcast this, this, uh, year, this month. And then January, 2024 will be over and never happen again. That's wild. So wild to me. Last thing, I saw this TikTok of this girl saying when the new year comes, she kind of gets a little sad. And I related with that so much because I was like, like literally everything that happened in 2023 is like past and like, we're not even on the year anymore. I just, I don't know. I always felt, I always feel like that. And I remember feeling like that as a kid too. Like, dang, this year is over. Like, I think it's also because the holidays are over and like from October to December is my favorite time of year. And so now it's January and it's like, <laughs> I have to wait 10 months. So anyways, I think that's it. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and you are going to have a fantastic week. And yeah, remember to stay cozy and to keep your nails fancy and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>